Thank you very much, Peter. I should say that I have no prior or previous religious commitment whatsoever. I'm interested in philosophy. I'm interested in trying to solve philosophical problems. For decades, I was some kind of uh, materialist and reductivist in my thinking. Now, as a matter of fact, it's pretty much impossible, it turns out, to solve the really fundamental problems about the universe without recourse to theology, without recourse to the existence of God, the immortality of the soul, and the freedom of will. I don't particularly desire this conclusion, um, uh, like most people in a way recently, or over the last so many decades, I was brought up to be um, suspicious of religious institutions and skeptical of religious beliefs. So I think that the answers to philosophical questions are theological. I think that the academic subject called philosophy exists through a lack of spiritual understanding or huge misconceptions about what spirituality is. Now some of these misconceptions about religion and spirituality are, sh are shared by theists as well as um, atheists. Now I'll just mention two misconceptions. One misconception is that the whole business um, is a matter of belief or disbelief. This is not right. It seems to me fundamentally a matter of knowledge. There's spiritual knowledge and it's possible to have spiritual knowledge and it's possible to lack spiritual knowledge and the knowledge is of the nature of acquaintance or experience. It's not of uh, centrally or paradigmatically of a propositional nature. Now the other huge misconception is that um, uh, if there is uh, spiritual reality or as the Dalai Lama puts it ultimate uh, reality or if there is God the other misconception is that God is a being or in some way a thing but not a physical thing but an immaterial thing now God is not um, being-like or thing-like. Now I'll just very briefly mention three philosophical questions um, which show that we need to endorse a kind of theology or a kind of spirituality in order to do philosophy adequately or to stand any chance of answering the questions. Now the first philosophical question is about time, the second philosophical question is about existence and the third one is about you. Now, the hardest part, contrary to popular belief, the hardest part of doing philosophy is not answering the questions, it's understanding the questions. It's understanding the questions. There are very few people, even, I would say, teaching philosophy professionally in the West, who understand philosophical questions in their profundity. In fact, I'd say that philosophy is essentially stuck in the 18th century. And... Um, and uh, so sort of arguing for and against the existence of this uh, being and um, based on um, uh, uh, the view that metaphysics is impossible or can't be done. Um, Stephen Hawking says that uh, philosophy is dead. Well, if philosophy is dead, it committed suicide. Human can't. Uh, um, both you know, com committed, committed uh, su suicide. But, but uh, philosophy is not dead. It's just... Um, it hasn't it stalled it stalled 200 years ago it's within a kind of i mean i mean in the, in the in 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 this millennium there are two huge pieces of human understanding which have yet to be digested by philosophy which make a colossal difference one of these is um the philosophical implications of quantum physics which my colleague daniel craig mentioned um, and uh, 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 and and the other is uh, heidegger's thinking Heidegger's, the thinking of Martin Heidegger, which is yes, yet to be fully digested and understood in European and North American philosophy departments. This, these, these two will bring about a revolution in philosophical understanding, but you know, rather, rather, late in, rather late in the day. Now, the three questions, just very briefly, are um, why is it now now, uh, what is it to be, and why is a human being you? Now, if you ask this question, why is it now now, um, simplistically or, na or naively, the, the answer is, well, this is as far as the universe has got, you know, um, wh whether it had a beginning or not. Um, the, these events happening now have, have un un unrolled or are unrolling, this is as far as the universe has got. But this is a comparatively 
superficial answer for many reasons. In, intuitively or centrally, uh, this is a superficial answer because, in a sense, it's always now, or it's never not now. The future is always in the past. Uh, the future is always in the, in the future, and the past is always in the past. Uh, well, maybe the future is in the past as well, but we, we have to keep it, um, keep it sim sim simply. It, it's certainly true that uh, any present is uh, somebody else's future and somebody else's past. I mean, we're, we're in some people's future and we're in some people's past, but never mind about that. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 the point is that um, there's a sense in which now is timeless. There's a sense in which it's always uh, now, where this always doesn't really pick out duration or a moment or even something that's instantaneous, but um, something that's utterly uh, changeless. Now, if you are sufficiently perceptive, you can notice that it's always now. I mean, uh, members of the public who are not trained in philosophy are actually much better at spotting or oh, having these insights than people who've been trained in philosophy uh, faculties. The other, now, the, the, the point is that um, presence is the presence of God presence is the presence of God. If we understand the unchanging nature of now, the nowness of now, if we understand that thoroughly, we'll realize that it has the attributes of God. It's, it's immaterial, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, timeless, it's a necessary condition for everything that happens in time and so on. Second question, what is uh, being? There's a distinction between being and beings. I mean, by beings, I mean the Sheldonian theatre, your head, uh, the Bodleian Library, this ballpoint pen, um, examination scripts to mark and so on. These, these are beings or things that are. But by being, I don't, by being or uh, being as being, I don't mean another thing like that. I mean the existing that all this is doing or what it is for any of this to be or the being of what is, whatever is. Now, if you understand Heidegger, or if you don't like Heidegger, if you read Parmenides, you can start at the beginning of philosophy instead of at the end, if you like. If you, read, if you understand Parmenides, you'll begin to understand that the properties of being, thoroughly understood, are the properties of uh, God. Being is largely ineffable, necessary for uh, beings. It's infinite, it's immaterial, and so on. Uh, and the third philosophical question is, why is something you? Now, um, this is again a hard question to understand because we think we already have the answer. We think the answer lies in biology, physics, chemistry, evolution, so on. Now, I, w I don't want to deny any of those very well-known facts of science. Let's suppose they're all true, even though because science has a history, it's very unlikely that it can be true. <laughs> now, uh, once all those facts are in about you, you were born in such and such a place, you've got such and such a mind, you have such and such a mother, such and such a father, and so on. We've not begun to understand why you view the world from this human being, this human being who you are. We've not begun to understand why all the human beings who are not you are, so to speak, arranged around you, but uh, one of the human beings is inside out or outside in, and that's its being you. We haven't begun to understand that. It certainly has no uh, materialist or scientific explanation. It's uh, Peter's holding up a big sign saying, stop. <laughs> or, uh, or, actually, it's quite a small sign, but it's got very big writing on it.